No matter who you are, no matter what kind of NASCAR fan you are, you love a great NASCAR post-race tempered fight, don't you? Everybody loves when NASCAR drivers get out of their car and go fist to fist or face to face with the driver that wronged them. In this video, we're going to look at some of NASCAR's best tempers over the years. The 2017 champion, will he get the bumper? Yes, he does. Here comes Legato. Legato on the inside. A drag race. They're sideways. And it's going to be Legato getting the win. Miami, baby. I can see you shaking. Is that out of anger or what's going on? Yeah, I'm happy I don't have a baseball bat or jack ammo right now. <laughs> All right, Colburn, good sense of humor about it, but not very happy about the end of that race. Win at all costs is the new motto for the NASCAR playoffs. And in 2018, Joey Logano put the bumper to Martin Truex as he needed a win to punch his ticket into the Final Four championship race. This is exactly what he did, but Truex, Truex's crew chief, and even Kyle Busch were upset with Logano after the race. It wouldn't surprise me that teammates wreck each other, so we were hoping that that would happen so we could get up there and have a shot to, uh, to race for the win. So I kind of held Truex a little bit up more than maybe I should have, but he got chicken shit anyway. So, um, you know, that's racing, I guess. When Kyle Busch first started racing at Joe Gibbs Racing, it's like he was against the world. If anybody wronged him, he was sure to let them know. And he was extremely upset when Carl Edwards put the bumper to him during the 2008 Bristol Night Race. He even hit Carl Edwards after the race. Edwards was taking none of it as he spun Bush out on the cooldown lap. Here's the pass. Just a little nudge getting in the corner. And Kyle Bush comes You gotta back. expect that. I mean, this is that it comes down to the end of the race. You gotta expect that he pays him back right there. Uh, gives him a little, gives Carl a little nudge, but can't get back by. Just frustrated he led so much of the race and lost it. Now here's the post race. Still. Wow. <laughs> Everybody says that Dale Sr. and Jeff Gordon were the real rivals of NASCAR, but if you wanted to see two drivers that really didn't like each other, it was Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. They ran into each other multiple times in the 90s and early 2000s, but it was at Richmond when both of them got together and then had to exchange words with each other after the race. This is after the race. And he gives him a little time. Oh, he great checked him. And uh, Jeff's arms out the window. And there's Rusty's response. Steve? points on Jared and that was a big thing for me today. I was real happy with the car. And man, I tell you, got too loose at the very end there and I fell from the lead to third. During the 2006 All-Star Race, a rivalry was renewed and it was Matt Kenseth and Tony Stewart. They ended up wrecking each other and knocking each other out of the All-Star Race when both of them had really competitive race cars that could have won that night. Kenseth did not understand why Tony would have wrecked him and Tony Stewart was extremely upset at the way he was raced by Matt Kenseth. And when they got out of their race cars after being wrecked, they definitely had words for each other. See those car, three cars back there stopping. <laughs> they didn't know where these two were going to go. You just watched that replay, what it looked like. I didn't see the beginning of it. You know, I knew Tony had a run. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, at the start finish line, he was still behind me. So I just pulled down against the grass because I was going to obviously protect the bottom. And, uh, uh, you know, if he got inside me, I don't know how he did. He must have run over the grass to get there. And once I said he was inside, I moved up, but he just tapped me in the left rear, and then he proceeded to take a right and, and, and run me up the fence. So, um, you know, if he was under there, I didn't know he was under there. I don't know how he got there when I was against the grass. Two really good cars wrecked in the garage. Tony, you've seen the replay. You were there. What happened? <laughs> Well, it's pretty funny. Uh, I was, that's the first time I've actually got to sit in a truck and watch uh, the other guy in the interview. But uh, it's a pretty demented view from where I saw. I mean, I got to run on him like he said. He got, at least he got that part right. But, uh, you know, you can see where they start the camera view that he's a whole lane and a half low. And, uh, you know, you don't go in the corner that way. So, uh, obviously, he's blocking there. And, you know, if he wants to complain about me getting under there, I mean, I was there. And, you know, any other weekend, that would be uh, acceptable. But, you know, it's, it's the... Uh, Nextel All-Star Crash Fest, so uh, 
you know, I think he screwed up on this one and thinks that, uh, if he thinks I did that and that was my fault, he screwed up in the head. Here comes 22 with a big push. He's on you. He's on you tight. All right, just got, he just shoved me straight in the fence. He just shoved me all the way in the corner. Therefore, they're 22 and four, not happy already. Get front row seat. Huh. Guess Harvey's mad. Kim, I was trying to help him. It wasn't even for a points race, but the first ever race of the season, the 2015 clash saw Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick extremely mad at each other. Joey Logano was pushing Kevin Harvick into the turn and pushing him up into the wall, costing them both a lot of positions. Kevin Harvick was furious at Joey Logano. Two drivers' careers that crossed paths more times than I can count, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. They ended up wrecking each other multiple times and they even later on in their career raced each other really hard. But they raced each other with a ton of respect. But one night, neither one of them had respect for each other, and it was at Darlington during the 2011 season. Kyle Busch would hook Kevin Harvick into the wall on the front stretch after the caution came out. Busch even didn't even receive penalties. Harvick was so upset, he chased Busch around the track, and it looked like they were playing chicken with race cars. Busch and Harvick then made their way down on pit road, where Busch would ultimately send Kevin Harvick's car into the pit wall as Harvick got in the car to go have words with Busch. Four to go this time. Four to go in three Oh, it's Hoyer in the wall. Hard. Hard wreck. He stays out. More, 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 more wrecks down here. Turn four. Big wreck. Harvick in trouble. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. We can hit a damper. Three of the four Childress cars in trouble in the right, closing right. laps. That's his number 18 against Harvick. Well, you can see already the left front of Harvick's tire where they made contact. The whole left side, and here comes Kevin back. Whoa. Gives the 18 a big shot in the rear. Boyer takes a wild ride into the safer barrier, and Kyle Busch turned Harvick around after they had made contact half a lap before. Yeah, I think the, something not quite right about that. I have to look at that another time or two. The sprint all-star race. And Harvick and Bush. <laughs> He's after him. Yeah, this 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 has just started now. Kyle says, I don't know how you got to This ain't going to happen too good. There was a pass. There was contact. And then, as Boyer went into the fence, Kyle Busch came and turned Kevin Harvick around. We know Harvick is, he, he, he plays rough. Especially when the race is over with. I've seen him climb over people's cars to get to him. We've got cars overheated, we've got drivers <laughs> overheated. And we got wrecked cars and... Bobby Labonte crashed on the final lap. Harvick looking in his mirror. Shuts the switches off. Something's going to have to give here, boys. This... We thought it could be Newman and Montoya. Turns out it's Harvick and Bush. And they are still stopped way up at the turn four end of pit road as Regan Smith does his victory lap. And Harvick's going to put the steering wheel back on. I think Harvick was getting ready to pop, hop out of that thing. I think somebody must have gotten to him. No, nope, wheels no, off again. Here, here he comes. comes. He says, okay, this is enough. I'm going back here, and we're going to have a little talk. And there goes his car. That dumb car just took off. This is the one time I will side with Danica Patrick. Brian Vickers just ran through her on the last lap. Even Kevin Harvick knew that he was in the wrong because he ended up crashing Brian Vickers after the race because of how stupid Vickers was driving. He took his anger out and it was showed on TV. 
and um, you know I tried to guard the inside right there at the end and, and Vickers gave me a bump and you know I get it I mean I was trying to defend and hold my position so um, we still came away with it with a 12th place finish so uh, you know it was good to do that for Godaddy obviously Hendrick Endrens was was very strong today I felt like I made a lot of passes so um, Continuing off of Martinsville and wrecking somebody after the race, Brad Keselowski just drove into turn number one after the race and wiped out Kyle Busch. Now this was just stupid. We've got quite a few that aren't happy. Mike Skeen and Max Pappas definitely not happy. They've had a, they've had a couple laps to, to ride around along with each other, talk to each other to show their displeasure. So they tried to talk with helmets on. Allen ends up the last on the lead lap and he was able to Stick his head inside the 94 to talk with Chase Elliott. Way down to the inside comes Austin Hill, playoff driver who had had a bad day, was trying to make something out of it at the end. Took a very optimistic move down into turn number one, and here you can see gets into the back of Myatt Snyder, spinning him. Now what's gotten everyone's attention is the discussion afterward. The two drivers appear to be having a discussion, and then what happens next? Well, we'll let you draw your own conclusion. NASCAR has seen this footage in the last 30 minutes and have told us that they are going to be talking to both teams and drivers about the incident that took place there. But from witnesses that were there, Mike Snyder actually got knocked out cold. It, this is something that is more of an assault side than it is a post-race temper.